Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome to the show. This is The Hold Down. I'm Ronnie Blakey and this is my co-host, a surf journalist with 25 years in the game. He also gave me my first atomic wedgie. It's my big brother Vaughn. Vaughn, good G'day to see you. Doggy. Here you go, mate. Mate, tell everyone uh, what this show is about, The Hold Down. Well, what's the story? First of all, it's surfing on TV. Something that didn't happen much when I was a grommet, but uh, great to see. It's good to be here with you and it's a show that basically just looks over surf history, some of the great moments, the highs and the lows, as well as dives into the lives of uh, some of our favourite surfers. Well, this show is, is going to be a special one to kick things off. Mick Fanning, a three-time world champ, a champion human. How good is he? Oh, mate, he's that good. Nah, he's the man. I mean, everyone uh, loves Mick Fanning so much, and uh, he's had a remarkable career for so many different reasons, and I'm looking forward to diving into this one, mate. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to kick off with number five in our Mick Fanning moments. So we're winding back the clock to 2004, and you've got to remember prior to this, Mick is on fire. In his third year on the championship tour, he was Rookie of the Year in 2002. 2003, he went up to number four in the world, and 2004, everyone's thinking world title, but then disaster strikes. Absolute disaster. It was uh, a lame little floater in the men's towers, just a regular old float, not a fin ditch, nothing special. And uh, he just came unstuck, and when he came down out of that floater, he compressed and ended up licking his shin bones. His body basically folded in half, ripped the hamstring, clean off the bone doggy. Yeah, painful trip home too, all the way out there in the, uh, the outer reaches of Indo. Mm. Had to get to Singapore, back to Australia, and it, it was confirmed, the hamstring completely torn off the bone. And uh, there was doubts whether he'd ever get back to his best. That's right. Actually, there was doubts whether he'd even be able to run again, which I know he was upset about because he loves running, Mick. Loves running on the beach with his dogs, doing all that sort of stuff. Luckily, he got in touch with uh, probably the best surgeon in the world who'd performed this procedure maybe only a handful of times. Drilled this metal hook into his bone, reattached the hamstring, and then had to sit out for uh, you know, a good part of a year just waiting to see if that was going to heal. So after about half a year of not surfing at all, Fanning starts this uh, amazing mm. comeback, this big rehab. And it also gave him time just to think about his, his dream. And that was sort of lost there for a while. I think that uh, Fanning was not really sort of fulfilling his, uh, his own height. Yeah, I think it was a, a tricky time because Kelly and Andy had such a stranglehold on those world titles around that time. And uh, Mick has openly said he was surfing for third a lot in those uh, early days. But once he got in that mindset of uh, you know rehabilitation, taking his body seriously, taking his surfing seriously, taking his mental game seriously, that's when things really started to click. And uh, that, that build up, by the time he got back, he was just a completely different surfer. The first event of the season on the Gold Coast, mm. at his home break, he turned up and oh. he just looked like a different man. Mate, he had gone from party animal, Eugene, someone we all knew and loved, into this, this robotic cyborg competition. <laughs> he was so brutal. And, uh, you know, his, his mental game was really noticeable straight from the first heat and he just carved his way through that event like a lunatic. Yeah. Beat Chris Ward in the final. Uh, it was a memorable performance and it set him on his path to greatness. Mm. So that was number five. Stay with us, because after the break, we'll reveal what's at number four on our list of fanning moments. This is The Hold Down. Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome back to the show. Ronnie here with Vaughn. We're running through Mick Fanning's great career moments. We talked about that injury in 2004 and the big comeback. Obviously, that led to some world titles in 2007 and 2009. Heading into the final event, the Pipe Masters in 2013, Fanning's got a shot at a third world title, but he's also up against one of the greatest. The greatest, Kelly Slater. The almighty goat. And, uh, mate, Three world titles, I mean, that takes you into a whole different realm of world champion. And the thing about Mick's first two world titles, it was an observation made in a few areas, was that Mick hadn't really had that key moment, that one decisive moment that takes you from being a champion to an immortal. And uh, it was all laid out here 
to go into that third world title club at the pipe against the GOAT. And that's why this moment is our number four. So basically, Mick's got his destiny in his hands. With a semi-final finish, he can stitch up this world title. But he's not the first guy you think of when you think about the best surfers out of pipe, is he? No, he's not. Actually, uh, up until that point, we had really yet to see the Cooley kids make a big statement out of Pipeline. I think Parker had put in some time out there. Mick was very accomplished out there, but not just not quite in that conversation. And uh, as we saw this thing set up, beautiful big chunky waves at Pipeline, and uh, Mick had a couple of really deadly close heats. The thing about a world title race like this uh, at the final event is you're gonna see top seeds pitted against guys who are desperate for results, trying to re-qualify for the championship tour. And that's exactly what Mick found himself uh, up against, CJ Hobgood, who is a known performer on the North Shore. For sure. And uh, one of the best pipe surfers, tube riders we've ever seen in the history of surfing, uh, the 2001 world champ. He'd been there, he'd experienced all that. Another guy who probably was desperate to get a pipe masters before his career wrapped up. And uh, he came out of the box hard and Mick had it all to do in that heat as well, doggy. And that was amazing. It was coming down to the wire. He needed an excellent score to get the victory and progressed through to the semi-finals to clench that world title. Kelly Slater on the other side of the draw was ploughing through the rounds and looking good for another victory. But this is the magic moment that we'd been waiting for in Mick's career. He uh, knifes into one. A big second reefer, absolutely perfect, sky blue day, everything was just set up for this moment. And instead of actually just drifting straight in off the takeoff, he did a big bottom turn, faded as hard as he could and got that memorable funnel just all the way through. Came flying out with his arms up in the air. It was just incredible atmosphere that day at the beach. Amazing, and Mick, last second heroic, saved himself, scraped through to the quarterfinals. And life didn't get any easier. He was up against Yaden Nickel, and they had one hell of a battle. Mate, this is one of the great pipe heats, uh, especially in the world title conversation for me, because Yaden came out of the blocks fighting for survival and just packed it right in, off in and off the takeoff, free falling down the face, engaging the fins, and just getting blown out, and the crowd was going crazy. But you know, we didn't know who to go for because no one wanted to see Yaden fall off tour, but everyone wanted Mick to win that world title. That image of Mick with his hands above his head, that's seared in my brain forever. But our next moment, I think, is one that nobody will ever forget. This is our number three. Three! So Mick's a three-time world champion. 2015 shaping up to be another fantastic year. And at Jeffrey's Bay, he can push ahead of the pack. He's up against another title rival in Julian Wilson when the unthinkable happens in the early stages of the final. Mate, this was surfing's JFK moment. You know, we have never seen anything like this. I mean, uh, everyone knows where they were and what they were doing when they first saw that footage. And this is just radical. I mean, you just can't believe that you could be surfing in a world tour event, and, and you know, a globally broadcast sporting final and have a wild animal play such a crazy role in it. Some amazing kind of takes on, on what unfolded exactly. There were, you know, journalists coming on the record saying, was it a shark attack or was it a shark visit? <laughs> I don't buy it for a second. When you watch the vision, people are saying it got stuck in his leg rope. It's nowhere near his leg rope when it explodes out of the water behind him. I think it maybe was having a bit of a look, a bit of a sniff mm. at what was there. Probably didn't like what it smelt, but it uh, <laughs> it exploded out of the water and then I think it got tangled in the leg rope. And Mick was you just idiot, so shut there. up. Let's go surf already. I'm not gonna sit and let you tell me. I'm not gonna sit and waste my time. Listen to you again. Listen to you. I've got better things to do. Let me tell you. I've got better things to do in my life. Something's wrong with you. Maybe I just sit here and waste my time.
Rose. Back to you guys. I think really the way he handled himself in the, in the wash of all that, he became a, a sporting superstar, like, you know, right up there with the, with the greats from all other sports. Mick's also done what many might think is completely mad. He's gone straight back in the water. Well, what's amazing to me, Borno, is that that isn't even in our top two. So stay with us, because after the break, we'll reveal number two on our list of big fanning moments here on The Hold Down. Welcome back to the show. Well, there's been few better departures from major sports than Mick Fanning's retirement at Bells Beach, and that's the reason this is our number two. Vaughan had had it all. I mean, there was the, the banquet dinner mm. to celebrate Mick, but the waves were firing and Fanning turned on. A long time coming. He gave uh, everyone the chance to, you know, really enjoy his last couple of events. He knew he was only going to do the Aussie leg. He went to uh, Snapper, had a bit of an agitated performance up there. He just didn't seem to really fit into his skin. And um, then he turned up down to Bells and a place where, you know, he's a four time winner. He uh, loves the wave, he loves the people, he loves the energy down there. And uh, like you say, he just put on a clinic. Put on a clinic. I, I just love the fact that he made Bells his final event as a full-time competitor. Because you think back to 2001, mm. as a wild card, he turned up there 19 years of age and won the contest. And to that many years later return and almost get the job done again in your final event is huge. Oh, mate, and just like it just shows you how much people loved him because people were freaking out about, you know, missing the chance to see him surf. People were leaving running cars on the side of the road and bolting down the hill to watch him surf his last few heats. I mean, it was just frenzied, the energy around sending off this champion of Australian surfing. And when you look at his run through the draw, the earlier rounds, a little underwhelming, but once he got into his happy place, into those quarterfinals and, and onwards, man, he started to drop some great numbers. I think quarters and semis in particular, we just saw the real Mick Fanning at Bells and he, he gave everyone what we wanted, what we desperately wanted. I mean, everyone wanted the win, don't get me wrong, but it, everyone wanted to see Mick surf his absolute best out there at, you know, big six foot bowl and he, he just brought it. And uh, yeah, it was just a, a really emotional, Farewell, and uh, again, one of those great things where Mick just like brings everyone in. It's like, you know, he's the, he's the world's greatest hugger. He pulls you right in, he gives you a big squeeze, and he was like doing that for all of us who have loved him. Yeah, it was awesome, but uh, he didn't win, unfortunately. No. Kirk, what's he doing? <laughs> Let us down, come on! But uh, it was an epic final up against Italo, one of the, the real sort of hot new names in the sport. Uh, Italo's backhand, just too sharp. Oh, mate, I mean, Check the footage, it's so brutal and it really didn't look like he was ever going to lose that comp. And in the end, uh, there was a not be really beautiful moment, a tender moment where Italo uh, had got his first CT win. He was just so overwhelmed with emotion, uh, but he also was so aware of what the moment meant for Mick as well. And they have this uh, big old hug. In that, hey? Eh? Oh. No? Bring it in. Oh, no. Squeezing each other. Mm. I wonder what they were saying to each other. Oh, I love you. I love you, mate. I love you. Obrigado. Mucho gracias. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a moment that Mick reckons was one of the best of his career. Getting to share that, that feeling that Mick had had so many times in his career for the first time with someone else who, you know, in all likelihood could go on to win a world title as well. What's he going to do with himself now, all this time on his hands? Well, he's got the golden ticket, mate, because uh, Rip Curl have whacked him straight on the search, and, uh, you know, from now on, we don't have to watch Mick in the heat anymore. We can just watch him completely cut loose out there in the wild. It's I gonna love be all that. time. Yeah, well, he's already uh, been to some, obviously, some destinations that we can't speak of because the search is... But he's also adventured to Alaska. He's been surfing over there, Norway, mm. surfed under the Northern Lights. In Norway, he's just he's done some incredible stuff, yeah. even wrestling lines and whatnot over in Africa. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, far out, he was living a pretty glorious life before, and now it's even better. So, you know, I'm sure all of us just want the best for Mick because we we know what his life has been like. It's been radical highs, radical lows, and uh, all we want to do is see the best of him surfing. And now that we've got the chance to see him do that out in the uh, the real world, the free world, it's going to be a wonderful thing. To 
be a part of, doggy. It's going to be great to see. Well, stay with us because after the break, we're going to reveal our number one in big fanning moments here on the Hold Down. Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome back to the show. You are watching The Hold Down and the time has come to unveil what is holding down the number one spot on the list in big moments in the life of Mick Fanning. And here it is, our number one. One! Well, even Mick Fanning calls this the pinnacle of his competitive career. Heading into the 2015 Pipe Masters, Mick Fanning is in the hunt again for the world title. There's actually six contenders in the mix. Uh, unbelievable just to think that there's that many people at that final event chasing the crown. Ultimately, Mick lost the world title that year. Adriano de Souza breaking through to get his first title and also winning the Pipe Masters. Congratulations to ADS, but uh, one of the worst judging decisions in the history of the WSL. Shame, shame. <laughs> Gabriel Medina beating Mick Fanning with one of the worst, flimsiest, most awful air reverses I've ever laid eyes on. But, you know, in the context of the week, Mick losing the world title and, uh, and, and that heat really didn't mean much in the end because uh, he'd been through so much. He got the uh, awful news, uh, you know, the day before one of the most important surfs of his career that his old brother Peter had passed away back in Australia. He kept it tight, it didn't really get out and um, he just basically used it as ammunition to go out and surf what is probably the greatest single heat of his life. A lot of people were kind of wondering why he was still taking part in the event and Pete wasn't an emotional guy but he'd caught up with Mick just a couple of months prior to Mick going over before the showdown and he told Mick that he was proud of him and his favourite thing to do was to watch Mick compete. So from that Mick got the strength to pull the jersey on and head out there and compete for this world title. And how's the lineup that he had in round four to try and crack the quarters? It was a really tough ask up against two of the best. Yeah, uh, Kelly Slater and John John Florence. So you're talking the two best pipe guys ever, uh, without doubt. And Mick Fanning paddling out with this just incredible emotional, you know, just weight on him. And uh, really, in the end, using it to surf the miracle heat. There's a moment which has been immortalised in a beautiful photo by Corey Wilson. We ran it on the cover of Surfing World and that was Mick exiting this barrel with his hands in the air. But if you look at the way that his body is positioned and then compare it to the uh, world title that he won in the dying seconds coming out, they're just completely different scenarios. They're telling totally different stories. One is relief and acceptance and you know this beautiful shot and the other one is just that hardcore you know victory stance. It says so much about Mick as a man and I mean we'd have already come to expect so much from him as a champion but that heat really just symbolised how special he is. And I think at that point Mick's decision to, to retire had kind of been made because even he said himself no other heat after that heat could uh, compare in just significance. Mm. There, there, there couldn't be as much on the line. To go out there and surf that heat for his brother just meant a lot. And to get a victory over Kelly Slater and John John Florence, not just two of the greatest pipe surfers, but the man considered to be the greatest of all time and the guy that everyone is talking about uh, taking that honour if he hasn't already. So uh, it was a, a huge victory. What a career it's been. It's been really fun reflecting on the big moments uh, of Mick's career. What do you think uh, is going to be his legacy? Oh wow, what a question. I mean, I think Mick's legacy is just one of absolute commitment. I think that he uh, has really shown the way as a, a guy who knows how to be staunch and come back from the most hugest obstacles. And he's really given everyone a blueprint to showcase how you can be the best, not just in surfing, but in every aspect of your life. He's the man. Mick Fanning, the man. Mwah. Love ya. We love it. Not too shabby for a bloke with his hamstrings screwed onto his leg, eh? Not too bad at all, and uh, we wish him all the best for his career after competitive <laughs> surfing. Make sure you tune in next week. We've got another big edition of The Hold Down coming your way.